Has anything changed in your, in your life in, in the last day or so? What about in the last week? I've learned lately that my ability to be able to adapt to changes directly affects my stress level, my happiness, and what it seems like I can really focus and dwell on. It seems like we're constantly having to navigate change in our life. Sometimes it's, it's simple changes, things like schedule changes. For instance, we had to decide to postpone the start of the Sabbath school year yesterday and uh, made a change there that kind of affected a lot of individuals. Um, as a sidebar, if, if you did not know about that or weren't notified, um, you're not in my system to be able to, to do that. And uh, see me after services and we can make sure you're getting on those notifications so that we can make sure you have the right information. But sometimes it's just schedule changes with our job, with family, with events going on that we have to adapt our lives to. Sometimes it's like traffic disruptions. You have to reroute to, to deal with little bits of change that happen every day. Sometimes it's, it's more of like life changes, maybe within our family, within our job, Different phases of life, of course, bring change. Our responsibilities may change. And of course, if we have loss, that certainly is a big change for us. There's also changes that you know, are, are really outside of our control. We certainly have seen a lot of these in the recent past. Restrictions, what's acceptable within society, changes in standards in morality, in culture, leaders, in government. Sometimes change is good. Sometimes it's not so good, right? Sometimes change affects us, and some changes don't. Do you like change? Now, your answer to that might depend on what kind of change. And I'm sure most of us would agree that a little bit of stability in our lives is certainly welcome. What, is, what does God think about change? Is there much change recorded in the Bible? Well, you might say, well, God doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, right? But I would say that God is all about change. The Bible is full of stories about physical and spiritual change. And although he doesn't change, his principles don't change, God wants change. His way, his plan for us and the whole world really is about change. Good change, right? Positive change. So today, I want to give you an encouraging message about change. I'm not going to focus on the change that we see all around us. I want to uplift us by looking at the changes that we see through God's Holy Day plan. So if we look at the spring Holy Days, we can see that there's definitely a lot of focus on changes that we need to make, that we make in our lives, and that we can control. We go through reflection, repentance, redemption, and renewal through Passover. We're putting out sin and putting righteousness into our lives through the Days of Unleavened Bread. Those are all changes that we have to make and that we look towards. Likewise, the Fall Holy Days also involve a lot of change. But it's changes that were, are more to happen to us and to the rest of the world. So that's really what I wanna look at today is what kind of changes do we have to look forward to after Christ's return? If you think about it, almost every major event after Christ's return involves major changes. The first resurrection, a day that we of course all look forward to, the changing of those that are faithful and to the saints. 
1 Corinthians 15, 51 and 52 tell us that we shall not all sleep or die, but we should all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall all be changed. This change, of course, is probably one that we look most forward to and that the world really needs to see with the return of Christ, the change that he's going to institute and the change from physical to spiritual for God's saints and his family. There's also another monumental change that will come shortly thereafter, which is Satan's removal. If you think about it, this is really going to be the first time in the history of man that Satan will not have influence over anyone. It's, it's incredible to think about how much change, how much good change will come as a result of that one action. It truly will be monumental to have Satan removed and his influence gone. Then, of course, we go into the millennium, a time of all kinds of changes, physical changes to the earth, governmental changes with the government we're all under Christ, cultural changes that will align everyone's thinking with God and with the Ten Commandments. There's almost too much change to even talk about in the message time that I have that, are in, that will happen and take place and the benefits that we will see during the millennium. But I thought it was really interesting that um, I, was, I was looking through and reading the, the, new, the new booklet the church has produced called The World to Come, and there's, a, there's an entire chapter dedicated to show how the Ten Commandments are going to be a part of the millennium and be taught in specifically how they will influence the changes that people will make. I want to kind of run through those real quickly, but I encourage you to look through that, especially this time of year as we prepare for the Feast of Tabernacles, to, to really kind of think through and look at and learn more about how the Ten Commandments specifically will apply and be utilized during the millennium. Because everyone will, of course, worship the one true God during the millennium. Nothing's going to be given priority over God. Everyone's language will be uplifting and kind and pure. Everyone will observe the weekly Sabbath like we are here today and all of God's festivals. Families will be strong and children will have the best family foundation to build future godly families that will bring peace and security and stability to the entire world. There's gonna be no more violence on any level from nations warring for centuries to the playground bullies. The cultural world, the culture of the world really will be peace. Marriage will be strong the way that God intended, adding to that stability of the family unit and, for, and you know, this is the way that society functions. We won't have to worry about theft and people will not have to fear for their safety. I mean, imagine the relief the world will feel when they don't have to worry about safety, locks, or passwords and can instead focus on giving. Honesty and truth will be the only way and greed and materialism will be all gone. People will wanna work for what they have and be thankful to God for their blessings. So, that's the millennium. The changes that we will see, that certainly will be a wonderful time, frame, time period. But are we done with all the changes that are part of God's plan? Of course not. We still have the second resurrection and the great white throne judgment. Of course, this is the time when the resurrection of everyone that has lived, that hasn't had their mind open to God, that will have their first opportunity to hear God's truth, to learn the right way to live, to change their life, to live the right way, and to accept God's way. That will, again, be another monumental event in the history of the world, of course, and 
one that we certainly all look forward to for probably a variety of reasons. But of course, some will still choose to be changed again in the sense that they will be permanently changed into nothing if they reject God at that point with the lake of fire. By that point, everyone would have made a choice and judgment would have been made and there'll be no more physical beings, only spirit. Everyone will have been changed by that point. So, are we done with the changes yet? Is this now done? Everything's spirit, everything's God's plan has gone through? Not, not quite. We still have the new heaven and the new earth. Because everything changes again, in a sense, as there's no more need for the physical. We read about the new Jerusalem coming in Revelation 21. I don't know if, if you're like me, but every time, it doesn't matter how many times I've read this scripture, it's still one of the most encouraging and scriptures that we look forward to most, I think. All, it's titled, of course, All Things Made New. Revelation 21, verse 1 says, Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them, and they will be their God. Already there's a lot of change that those verses cover. And then verse 4, And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there should be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There should be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write these things, for these words are true and faithful. The change that those verses encompass, especially verse 4, I think, with no more death, no more sorrow, is what this world truly needs. Something we certainly all hope for. So is God now done with change? Well, I don't know. I don't know that any of us know. The only way for us to know for sure, I think, is to probably be there and to see what he has planned. So change can be good or change can be bad. We all certainly need change in our life. And as we're reminded each year through God's holy days, we need to look for ways that we can continue our journey of conversion and find ways to change to be more like God. Because I'd say that God is in the business of change. But the change that God brings is always good. Many of the changes that we've seen today that are to come that will benefit the entire world as they learn the right way to live, that will transform, them, transform their lives and solve so many problems that people face. These are all things that God has already shared with us and is working with us to perfect with the help of his Holy Spirit. That's really powerful, I think, to think about as we look at what is to come and how much of it that we've been blessed to know now and the benefits that we can receive by following God's way. So as we rehearse the remaining holy days this year, let's not forget the changes that he has taught us to make in our lives. Let's thank God that we are called to know his plan and have hope in the changes that he will bring to the entire world.